crap kicked out of me here. Some people work only for the money. Others do what they love most and manage to get paid for it. Do you mind not interrupting me when I'm working? Stuart Copeland is in the second group. He's been making music all his life, first as a co-founder and drummer of The Police, then as a composer for films such as Rumblefish, Highlander 2, and Wall Street. Now he's writing the music for Spyro the Dragon, his first video game project. What makes composing for video games fun? How does he do it, and why does he like it? PlayStation Underground visited his small, unmarked studio in Hollywood, where he showed us some secrets. Good, we have sound. Step one is to beat the level. Now, for a 10-year-old kid, this is no problem. But for me, you know, I have to beat the level and figure out the jumping, and I, and I kind of navigate my way through the, the uh, levels. In the very early stage, it's a lot of fun because I find a level that I can beat and get an attitude for it and then uh, create a piece of music for it. But then as the game progresses and I start getting to some of the more difficult levels and I'm stumped immediately, I've got to beat this bad guy before I can stay on that level for long enough to write a piece of music for it. So I have to learn how to beat all the bad guys. And I, 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 if I was having to pay for my helpline, I'd be renting up a huge tab here. So then once I've, I'm on the level and I've got a general attitude for the game, I have to, within the atmosphere of that level, have a lot of different changes happen, but stay kind of in the atmosphere. Then I go back and I look for how to make those inner complexities more complex and to have uh, deeper sub-layers um, and things that don't really hit you the first time, but hit you the 16th time so that it can survive repeated listenings. Roll some of the crevulation off it there. Give it about 60 feet. Well, let me start something. Let me write something yes. for you. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something which is a, a, a trade secret here, but I have input quantize, which means that I can play it very badly, and it comes back played very nicely. I can loop those two bars there. So it'll just go around and around and around those two bars. Okay, now let's get some bass going there. Okay, yeah, so there's a bass line. Now let's get some drums happening. Okay, now, now let's get some heavy metal going here. Okay. They pay me for this. And then, of course, you can get into all the uh, cool stuff like, uh, okay, and copy the, the bass part onto other instruments to kind of thicken it up. And then I add scary stuff to, you know, add to it in various different ways. Where is that? Uh... Now, this is really where I'm giving away the trade secrets. This is where Mozart would be jumping out of his grave and saying, I want to live in this century, where I transpose that part from there up to there. And it plays that same piece of music. So I've just done a whole transition there, took all those instruments and moved them up that much. Looks like fun, doesn't it? In his career, Stewart has both performed music and composed it. We wondered which is more fun. When I play music, I have the instrument in my hand, I don't think, and my hands do the walking. And it's a bodily function. It, it is instinctive, it just happens. Composing all happens in the mind, and my body is an inert, dead fish. Somebody once asked Stravinsky, what's the, what's, what's the, the great moment of, of being a composer? Is it when the audience lights up into your music? Or is it the reviews? He said, no, 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 no. The best moment is when you find that note you're looking for, and you get that chord which leads to that chord, and you've got this under thing happening there, which pays off right here. At the same time, set it, and you crack it, and you've got it. It goes there, and it does it. That's it. And it's downhill from there. What's it like to compose for the PlayStation? The 
Sony PlayStation has room for high quality music that has full bandwidth. It's the same as you get from a CD. Whereas the other platforms has a very thin bandwidth. And the thinness of the bandwidth puts an imposition on the composer where he has to create sounds that'll fit within that. On these CD-ROM games, there's so much space. I don't have to worry. I can load up full symphonic sounds there. In fact, I have in this game. I've got a whole orchestra of sounds that I recorded in Utah. I use the orchestra as a flourish here and there to provide drama. Because the game is actually quite grand. He's flying through castles, and there's a big sky. And it's a very open, expansive feeling, which is where the orchestra comes in. But for the uh, energy and for the jeopardy, I've got raging rock guitars and drums and pounding rhythms. Any kind of art is about creation of tension and resolution. And in music, it's more subtle how it happens and it's more esoteric how it happens, but it's the same thing. You create a tension and then you release it. The most fun part of the process is uh, being able to be in there like this and I get a phone call and I can shout at my staff, don't interrupt me when I'm working.